learning objective two. Establish your own debt limit. Uh, this is really important. You want to set your own debt limits. You, you know, as I mentioned in the previous section, there are plenty of people out there who are willing to lend to you um, no matter whether you can afford it or not. They, Uh, debt to income method uses uh, your annual or monthly debt payments, including mortgage divided by your gross annual or monthly income. A uh, ratio of 36% or less is desirable. The uh, debt payments to disposable income method uses your debt payments to disposable income. Your mortgage is not included in this calculation. Uh, mortgage interest is not included in this calculation. The uh, um, you're considered over indebted if your ratio is 15% or higher. Um, the, the next chart, 6 1, shows uh, the, the debt payment limits as a percentage of disposable income. Um, you know, obviously, zero is no debt at all. 10% uh, or less is uh, little debt, but um, 11 to 14% is safe but uh, you're fully extended. So um, you start, you know, when you get up 11 to 14 percent, you're starting to feel stress. You know, anything, uh, you know, when you start getting up above that, you, you're beginning to, you're, you're in financial trouble. So um, we also have the ratio um, of uh, debt to equity. Uh, the uh, the ratio of your consumer debt to your assets. It's the um, it's uh, equity is the amount by which the, your the value of your assets exceeds your debts. Um, any ratio a ratio of thirty three percent or higher is excessive when it comes to your uh, um, your debt to equity ratio. Um, table six two gives you. It shows you the impact of increasing debt payments on on, on a budget. We've uh, we got a um, a uh, person with that makes thirty four thousand dollars a year, and they've got seventy six hundred dollars in taxes and insurance. Their disposable income is twenty six thousand four hundred dollars. Um, uh, so the monthly is twenty two hundred. If we look, we start on the left, we have no debt, and they, they pay all their expenses, and they're, you know, they're able to, to make, put $250 in savings and you know, pay for you know, utilities, insurance, uh, rent, um, clothing, transportation, and so forth. And then we see as we move across the page, we're, we're less and less able to pay, uh, we end up with 25%. Uh, we've cut the amount of food and, and savings that we're, we're able to set aside. We, we cut our uh, um, uh, we cut our, our charitable contributions. We cut our entertainment. Uh, we cut the purchase of clothing and so forth. This just gives you an idea of the impact of what's what's uh, um, you know, going on as we get in debt. Now uh, the uh, we get. Uh, you know, the debt payment goes from zero to five hundred and fifty dollars a month. So our, our our financial flexibility is severely constrained at this point. Uh, another method of setting debt limits is continuous method, uh, continuous debt method. If you are unable to get completely out of debt every four years, you probably lean on debt too heavily. Um, Finally here, dual earner households should consider lower debt limits rather than limit based on their combined incomes because of the likelihood or possibility that one of the um, wage earners might uh, uh, lose their job or become less than fully employed. Uh, managing student loan debt. Always know your outstanding debt and monthly payment. Um, Choose the most advantageous uh, repayment pattern allowed. Um, 
make your payments on time every, every time. One thing to note about student loans that you're you never escape student loans. You can't walk. You'll never be able to walk away from student loans. Um, you know there have been talk in Congress about uh, um, having uh, um, giving students some sort of relief. Uh, it, it hasn't ever made uh, gained any traction. That doesn't seem to be so at this point in time. But you can go bankrupt ten times, and your student loan debt will still exist. Um, you can pay it electronically. That's set it up for automatic payment on on a monthly basis. Pay it on on or before its due date. Um, you can also consolidate your student loans. Um, there are various companies, including a company called SoFi, that may offer you a lower rate if your student loans, if your federal student loans are not subsidized and you're paying 6.8 percent. Uh, this company SoFi might be willing to offer you a lower rate on a consolidation loan for your student loans. Others may as well. Uh, yeah, the, uh, <coughs> you can also, if necessary, sign up for the federal government's income-based repayment plan. Um, the uh, uh, concept check 6.2, what are the threshold levels, levels for debt payments to disposable income? debt service to income ratio or ratio of debt to equity is that would indicate that a person is carrying too much debt. Uh, ratios of 15%, 36%, 33% respectively. And finally, if it takes more than um, four years to pay off your debt, um, anything above those percentages or over 4%, you're, you're relying on uh, debt too heavily. Um, so how how should dual earner and discuss how a dual earner household should consider their ability to carry it on additional debt? Dual earner couples might think they can take on debt levels commensurate with their combined incomes. This can lead to trouble if one of the incomes slows or stops, if the person's hours are cut, or if they were laid off, for example. Either one of those could potentially cause a problem.